Well, as Greg mentions, uh, Louisiana Tech comes to town at two and two. They are coming off a gut wrenching last second loss to North Texas, forty to thirty seven. And uh, we've got uh, Steve Helwick on the line from SB Nation's Underdog Dynasty and Hustle Belt to help us break down La Tech. Jack Turner, 9 of 13, 145 yards. Uh, Tyree Shelton, 152 yards in that effort against North Texas. Steve, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. Yes, uh, Louisiana Tech, it's a team that's already played four games. It's kind of crazy to think that this season just started and some teams are already a third of the way through their regular season schedule. So, yeah, it's flying by. What's your assessment of a team that was 3-9 and nine last year? they already two-thirds of the way to that win total, of course. But um, in regards to this game that they just played against North Texas and what kind of issues they could pose the Huskers. I thought it was a very disappointing loss in North Texas. I know they were three and nine this year, but this was a team I actually had kind of high expectations for. You don't see Louisiana Tech down too often. They don't have too many losing seasons. It was year one under Sonny Cumbie last year. But this year, I liked a lot of their transfer portal additions and a lot of their roster. The coldest Crawford, baby. <laughs> the coldest Crawford, Nebraska legend and all name team legend. Yes. Uh, but yeah, getting Hank Bachmeyer at quarterback and then really shoring up the defense with a lot of uh, experienced FCS transfers. I expected good things out of Louisiana Tech this year, especially in a CUSA conference, which did not have too many strong teams going into the season, just WKU and Liberty, really. So. Yeah, I think this was a disappointing loss in North Texas. I was impressed by their resolve and resiliency, though, coming back down from 30 to 14 to tie the game, only to get their hearts broken on a game-winning field goal. But now this team is super banged up, especially at their running back position. There are three running backs down now. Luckily, their fourth running back does have some experience in Tyree Shelton. He was one of the uh, two running backs in Miami, Ohio's running back duo during their 2019 MAC championship run he hasn't played too much since then but he does have some experience had over 100 yards last week so seems like it's plug and play they have a good running back no matter what but the main issue is Hank Bachmeyer is down with a shoulder injury Sonny Cumbie said during his press conference that he's not sure if he's going to play my guess would be that Bachmeyer does not play this game and they're going to have to settle with the backup Jack Turner who did help with that comeback effort last week but You'd rather have Hank Bachmeyer, who has 30-plus games of starting experience, has won some big games before. You'd rather have him back there at quarterback this week. Greg, uh, anything for Steve? Uh, well, I don't You know, I mean, Nebraska, obviously, one of the top defenses in the country right now, um, especially uh, rushing the quarterback. Um, how are they going to handle Nebraska's 3-3-5 defense and their pass rush? I'm not sure if they can. Uh, Louisiana Tech hasn't been too assertive so far this year in the trenches. And I think that Nebraska's defense, they've overwhelmed a lot of opponents. I mean, they got eight sacks even on that high-powered Colorado offense. They've really got through every offensive line that they face this year. They made things really difficult for Rocky Lombardi at NIU. He went like 11-28 of 28 last week. So I am very concerned, especially if a backup quarterback's playing about Louisiana Tech's ability to handle pressure. Nebraska has a very talented linebacking core, I think, and I think that that group is going to provide a lot of pressure and also stopping the run. They're only allowing 1.7 yards per carry right now, and Louisiana Tech, one of their strengths this year has been the ground game. We've had a lot of century running backs. Tyree Shelton got 152 last week. Keith Willis Jr., who's going to miss this game with a high ankle sprain, had 188 the previous week. So they've established a lot on the ground this year, and I don't know if they'll be able to do that against this Nebraska defense, which has been so relentless. So I'm I'm envisioning Louisiana Tech on average is under three yards per carry, and they throw Jack Turner into a lot of long, uh, long down and distance situations, and they're going to have to make some explosive passing plays in order to win with Smoke Harris and Cyrus Allen. Yeah, Smoke Harris is a real deal. Yep. He's been there for like 15 years, it feels like. <laughs> Justin, anything yes, on this one for Steve? Yeah. The only uh, big question I had, you know, just from your your take and breaking down the, uh, the preview of this, what do you think is Nebraska's biggest um, strength? You know, you mentioned the pass rush, um, but what do you think is – 
Nebraska's biggest strength over Northern Illinois in this game? And then what do you think is the X factor on Northern Illinois side that they have an advantage over Nebraska? Well, against Northern Illinois, I thought it was. I mean, I'm sorry, Louisiana Tech. I apologize. Yeah. Well, <laughs> against Northern <laughs> Illinois. I, I was just talking about defense. Defense. We I mean, can analyze that game. I bet I could even predict the final score of that game. <laughs> I think I'm all over that one. That that was my trick there. I was just I wanting y'all to know that I uh, I knew this stuff inside and out. But no, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I've been talking about Northern Illinois a whole lot this week. So <laughs> last week. So well, that's a power run team right there, and that's a team that needs the run run game to thrive. And Nebraska really just shut that down and took the Huskies' offense completely out of it. So I think Nebraska's greatest strength is their run defense, and which is funny because that felt like one of their greater weaknesses last year. Teams were just running all over them, yeah. and this game presents a very disparate a disparity in the matchup between the run defenses because Louisiana tech was the second worst run defense in college football last year. And this year they've been pretty bad as well. Uh, ranking 125th out of 133 teams in yards allowed per game. So what Nebraska's greatest strength is, is what Louisiana tech's greatest weakness is. So I should expect big day from Harburg running the ball as a quarterback, a uh, big day from the running backs too for Nebraska. And I think they'll be able to, gain yardage on ease on this Louisiana Tech defense. And conversely, I don't know if Louisiana Tech down to their fourth running back is going to be able to accumulate too much of the line of scrimmage against what we've seen from this Nebraska defense so far this year. Wow, even the Louisiana guys think Harburg's the guy. I was going to ask my next question. I was like, who are y'all? Who, who, uh, it's who Harburg. Kind of like, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But, uh, Love it. But – um. You know, with with uh, the injuries to uh, Nebraska, especially the running back room over there, does that is that giving, you know, in your eyes, does that tremendously help y'all, you know, or how are y'all viewing that? And then also, what is the game plan to kind of try to stymie that um, if you don't necessarily have the 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 horses to run with, you know, our run game or vice versa? What's kind of the the talk of how they're going to prepare for that? I, I don't know. I think Nebraska should be too concerned. I mean, every single running back this year has had some success to some degree. They're all averaging at least 4.5 yards per carry. On the Louisiana uh, Tech side, though, how what what is their kind of like talk on – are they – you know, what is their approach to kind of schematically plan for those disadvantages that they have? Have they have mm -hmm. they alluded to that? Uh, Sonny Cumby did talk in his press conference. He was saying that missed tackles were a big issue against North Texas and then explosive playmaking, which Nebraska hasn't been too big of an explosive playmaking yeah. team this year. Mm -hmm. And that was one problem that they had against North Texas's offense was they were allowing so much on the ground, and then it was just opening up more for Chandler Rogers through the air, had over 300 passing yards. It was a 40-point game, and they really couldn't stop anything throughout the entire game. A lot of missed tackles on the back end blown coverages and uh, North Texas was able to find a lot of uh, advantages. Uh, Louisiana tech plays a lot of man coverage. They don't play as much zone as a lot of teams. So they were just getting beat a lot of the times on the back end. So I think that coverage missed tackles were some of their biggest problems. And those are some things in, uh, Nebraska could try to expose, especially the missed tackles with when they're running the ball, because I think that Nebraska should be able to get, a lot of good push at the line of scrimmage with their offensive line. I think that they should be able to win this game pretty easily. I like that. <laughs> I, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I think, you know, Tony White, Nebraska's defensive coordinator, was talking about the prolific offense that Louisiana Tech runs. Um, is that going to be hampered because of the quarterback situation in your mind? I think so. I mean, I haven't seen too much of what Jack Turner is capable of. He had a good, inspiring comeback last week. But this, I mean, Hank Bachmeyer was the reason that they won their first game of the year against FIU. He led a really poised drive at the end of the game, had over 300 yard passing, which he didn't really do that much at Boise State. He looks like a really good fit for a Sonny Cumbie offense, one that likes to air it out a lot. So I think that losing Bachmeyer is going to be a lot to overcome in this one, and especially with all their running back injuries, because they have been running the ball well and complementing Buckmeyer in the run game pretty well. This is a good balanced offense, I'd say, Louisiana Tech. They might not have the best offensive line holding up, and as I said, 
alluded to earlier, the defense isn't where it needs to be. But I think that they're running a pretty good offense there. And their receivers can be a problem. Smoke Harris, he's a good short yardage threat. He's someone that they like to deliver it to on screens, makes a few guys miss, gets in the open field. And then Cyrus Allen, the stats don't really show it this year. But watching Cyrus Allen as a true freshman, he's he's a home run playmaker. He's somebody who gets a step on you on a go route, deep post, 30 yards down the field and bang, just like that. So I think that Louisiana Tech has one of the best wide receiver duos, one of the most slept on wide receiver duos in the country and one of the probably the best one in the CUSA other than maybe WKU. So I think that this has a pretty good offense overall. I don't know how much damage you'll be able to inflict on Nebraska because Minnesota couldn't get much, just one late fourth quarter touchdown. Colorado struggled for the first half. NIU couldn't really get much. So some something's got to give in this one. Yep. I think the uh <clears throat> I think what what Colorado did that um made the defense just they wore them down. Uh our offense, you know, the turnovers led to that. So even even that game is still a little bit of an outlier because it was 13 to 6 up until like 6 minutes to go in the third quarter. Um but yeah, similar to your point that y'all won't necessarily if especially if Harburg's a starter, um you know, we lack that deep pass game. So that's not something that I feel is going to be, you know, we've been getting work in the short intermediate pass game and running the ball. Um, so in, in what ways do you think, you know, if what is the offense in y'all's, y- your eyes, best case to kind of somewhat try to exploit this defense or what's the best game plan offensively to go against this defense? Uh, who's uh, offense? Who's defense? Uh, sorry, losing attack. Not Northern Louisiana Illinois this time. Louisiana Tech's Louisiana. offense against yes. Nebraska's defense. Yeah. What What's the best? What do you think is the best scheme to kind of, I guess, try to make something happen against this uh, defense? In your opinion, I'm gonna try to. I'd go for some explosives on mm-hmm. this one with Smoke Harris, Cyrus Allen. I like what they have in their receiving game. Also, I'm not sure how much the run game is going to be able to contribute in this one. And they're shorthanded in that area. So I think that this one's going to come down to what they can do as a passing attack and see Mm -hmm. if they can get some deep shots, can get 10 to 15 yard uh, takes at a time, because I think that that's the weaker area of the Nebraska defenses in the secondary. So that's something that Louisiana Tech's going to have to try to carve up if they want to have a chance to stay in this game. Maybe even try to draw some penalties, something just, you know, yeah. I'm not sure there's a weaker spot in the Nebraska defense. <laughs> Sorry, my dog's moving. All right. Uh, anything else for Steve? Um, no, outside of just uh, – yeah, I, I was just really curious that – that um, what's the game plan coming in, and especially with – yeah, with the, with y'all's injury situation, man, that makes it a whole mm-hmm. – and that's, that's tough, so – no, but I appreciate you answering our questions. I appreciate you stopping in. So thanks for how that. Much, how much are they making coming to Lincoln? A million? Uh, who making? A million two? Louisiana Tech? Oh, from the span. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Enough. Can't find the game chat. I'm tired of teams paying us to come beat us, though. So <laughs> it's, it's not our, our us paying them to come beat us. Yeah. So. Hey, you got NIU good. this time. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. It, didn't, it didn't result in an athletic director firing. <laughs> <laughs> Last time they were here, they won in 2019. So yeah. that's a step up. <laughs> yeah. All right, Steve. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Everyone, check out Steve's work underdogdynasty.com, hustlebelt.com, SB Nation. What does the uh, the travel log look like this weekend, Steve? Just one game, and it's a team Louisiana Tech's already played this year, and it is SMU who is playing at TCU in the Iron Skillet, the third last edition of the Iron Skillet as we know it before the rivalry dissolves, just like so many great rivalries we've lost to non-conference play. So I'll be up in Fort Worth at the Carter this weekend. All right. Well, enjoy the game. Enjoy the weekend. Week four in college football. Steve, thanks so much for checking in and dropping some knowledge on Louisiana Tech. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Anytime.